Okay, I see it's uh, four o'clock. So. There. Okay. I want to welcome everyone to this hybrid meeting in person and virtual meeting committee of adjustment of Township of Central Frontenac. Just so everyone is aware, members of the public may join in person or virtually. For those of you who may be new to the Committee of Adjustment, my name is Bill McDonald, and I'm the chair of the committee. We also have with us Victor Hayes and uh, Philip Smith and Cindy Deachman, our deputy clerk, will be assisting us as a meeting host, and we are also joined by planning staff. The format of the meeting will follow the agenda posted online, which will, can be found on the township's website. Staff have also prepared a presentation for everyone to follow along with, the, with during the meeting. This will be shown on the screens. For each application with a public hearing, we will follow this format. I, as chair, will introduce the files so everyone knows where we are on the agenda. The planners will provide an overview of the application. We will then ask if there are any comments from the applicant or their agent. Committee members will then ask staff or the applicant or their agent questions if there are any. The public will then have an opportunity to ask questions. I encourage you to ask any questions that you feel comfortable with, with the new process. The committee will then deliberate and vote on the application. Voting will take place with members of the committee raising their hands and I will then state whether the vote was carried. All members of the public will have an opportunity to provide comments on the new application. If a person or public body does not make an oral submission at the meeting or make a written submission to the Township of Frontenac before the decision is made, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision. Township staff will be in touch following the meeting and will be forwarding a copy of the decision within 15 days to the applicant and anyone who is requested to be notified. Should you have any questions after the meeting, we encourage you to reach out to staff, the applicant, the minister, or any other person or public body who has an interest in the matter may within 20 days of making the decision, the date of the notice of appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal against the decision of the committee by filing the secretary treasurer of the committee a notice of appeal. I will now ask Cindy to provide an overview of how the members may attend virtually can participate. And Mr. Chair, we don't have any virtual attendees at this time, so I'll skip that section. And if we do have anyone join in, I can explain it at that time. Okay. In the unlucky account that we have connection issues and the meeting cannot be restored within 15 minutes, the meeting will be postponed. Staff will be in touch with each applicant. A notice will also be posted on township social media, letting you know. With that, then, we will begin the meeting. I have a motion moved by Victor Hayes and second by Philip Smith, the agenda be adopted as, are there any late additions to the agenda? As presented, any discussion? All in favor? This motion's carried. Are there any disclosure pecuniary interest and general nature of them by any member of the Committee of Adjustment on any item on tonight's agenda? The minutes will indicate no disclosures. I have a motion moved by Philip Smith, second by Victor Hayes, that the minutes of September 8, 2022 be adopted as, were there any errors or omissions that noted by any member? Any further discussion? As presented, all in favor, motions carried. No deferred items. Okay. Then the first item on tonight's uh, agenda will be 2322 Hinchinbrook Netto, creation of new lots. And uh, who's leading this? Jenny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as noted, this is an application for the creation of one new rural lot that will be located on Minnie's Lane. So the severed parcel will be uh, approximately 0.83 hectares or just over two acres in area with 91 meters or about 300 feet of frontage on Minnie's Lane. The retained parcel will have 400 meters of frontage on Long Lake Road and 
over a thousand meters of frontage on Minnie's Lane. Uh, Minnie's Lane bisects the subject property, as we'll see on the next slide. Uh, the severed parcel will be entirely within the lot area and will have no water frontage. The retained parcel does have frontage on Long Lake of approximately 750 meters, or just a bit under 2,400 square feet, or not square feet, 2,400 feet on Long Lake. Um, the subject property is designated both rural area and waterfront area and zoned rural and waterfront residential. The severed parcel will be zoned rural and designated rural. There are some unevaluated wetlands and a water course that does bisect the subject property, but they are outside the boundaries of the proposed severed parcel. So on this next slide, you can see the subject property is outlined in red, so it is a fairly large property naturally vegetated with the wetland going through the middle. Minnie's Lane runs mostly along the northern part of the lane and serves to access the subject property as well as several waterfront residential lots that are also developed. The new lot proposed is this one in the middle here, um, shown in yellow. This application was circulated for review by the septic authority. Uh, comments dated the 25th of August indicated no objections to the application and con Comments from Rideau Valley Conservation <clears throat> indicated no objections to the application. Um, however, they did request or recommend a slight adjustment to the western lot line location due to a wetland feature identified during their site visit. Here on this next slide, you can see the proposed lot location. The wetland area is this area here shown in the hatched outline. There's a bit of a, a stream running through it. So the recommendation was to move just the western lot line or this possibly the entire lot, about five meters or so to the east to ensure that no part of the new lot is located within that wetland feature. And they included that as a recommended condition of approval for the committee. Um, planning staff are recommending that the committee of adjustment approve this application as submitted, um, subject to any comments from the public today. And the following conditions are recommended by planning staff. All conditions must be met within two years, acceptable reference plan or legal description, um, creation of an easement or right of way over Minnie's Lane, as well as the creation of the new lot to provide access to this new lot. And no portion of that new lot shall be located with any wetland feature on the property, any outstanding taxes paid, abandoned wells be sealed, um, and confirmation that all conditions have been fulfilled. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, are there any comments from the applicant? It's, it's just the one little form that they're referring to. And if we move the surveying space just over about 30 feet, then we're not going to eliminate any concerns about that. And so we plan to do that. So the lot will, instead of it being like a perfectly square lot, it will be sort of. So you go to the point of the point of the point of Okay, sorry. Um, so we we're planning on moving the west stake over probably about 30 feet to eliminate any concern from Rideau Conservation Authorities. and. So the, I don't know if we'll move both stakes, but I think we'll just probably have it on an angle because there's lots of road frontage there to allow us lots of area to get to the, to get to the lot. So that's the plan. Other than that, everything else looks good, I guess. Okay. Concerns. Thank you. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions in regard to this application? Go ahead, Philip, to the applicant. Or it, Jenny. It's, it's not really in regards to the application, but more about the request to not have the new lot created with any wetlands in it. I'm just that, I think that's the first time I've really heard that we're requesting that there be no wetlands in the new created lot. It, and if you've traveled through Central Frontenac, there's a lot of wetlands. <laughs> Yes, I absolutely agree. And generally, um, we wouldn't put something like that in because that's that's just not possible. In this case, uh, comment, conversations with conservation staff were that putting it in in that way in this property, that was the only wetland feature they identified within the boundaries. So by having that in, it was just making sure that their requirement for that lot line being moved slightly on the western side, outside the wetland feature was met. Um, 
if that's the intent of the applicants, we could look at removing that. That was just the way that conservation recommended putting it in. So I went with their recommendation. Go ahead, Victor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think just for clarification, I don't think the, the Conservation Authority is saying no wetlands on the property. They're saying we do not want a um, lot line bisecting a wetland because then you could have different uses for the for the wetland. So I, I do recall seeing no bisecting wetlands before. Um, and, and I think this way, it removes the wetland entirely from that lot, but that was not necessarily the intention of the conservation conservation authority. Does that make sense, Jenny? Yes, I believe. So that was the discussion. They didn't want anything bisected and they had that corner was sort of infringing on or encroaching on. And if by moving that one side and I say planning staff just said it, you could move the one line, shift the whole lot. There's a variety of ways. And it just, it was a tricky way to word to put in and get the intent of the conservation authority. Um, Cindy, is there anybody in the public that have are asking any questions in regard to this application? There's nobody registered. Okay. Are there any, uh, is there anybody, anybody else in the public here have any comments in regard to this application? Seeing none, then uh, I will read the motion before me. This is moved by Victor Hayes and second by Philip Smith. The consent application B2322 Hinchinbrook Netto for the property located on part lot 28 concession four and five in the geographic township of Hinchinbrook for a 0.83 hectare, 2.06 acre parcel as a new lock together with a right of way be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. And you saw those. The secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirement of the planning act, including the providing of a notice of decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed and that all conditions outlined the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act. Any further discussion by the members of the committee? All in favor of the motion before us. This motion is carried. And I might warn you that Jerry cannot paddle down over to your property there. So, so. anyway, there you go. Next item on tonight's agenda is B2422 Olden Park Hill creation of new lot. And who's leading discussion? Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so everybody in attendance today, my name is Dimitri. I'm one of the uh, planners with the County of Frontenac. Uh, so consent application B2422 proposes to sever a new rural residential uh, property from an existing 15.4 hectare or 38.1 acre lot uh, located at 1361 Tryon Road, having the legal description of part lot 7 concession 10 in the geographic township of Olden. The proposed lot will be 1.6 hectares in area or about four acres with 215 meters or about 705 feet of frontage along Tryon Road. And it will extend down south to the edge of the water course um, that's located, um, that bisects the subject property. The subject property is zoned and designated rural by the township zoning bylaw and by the official plan. Uh, both the proposed retained and the severed lots are vacant. There is a cement pad on the property, but uh, it appears to be only used for storage at this point. Uh, residential development is anticipated for the severed lot uh, in the future. Uh, the uh, retained land is large enough to support a, a wide variety of uh, uses listed in the rural section of the zoning bylaw. The subject property itself contains two dug ponds several large wetlands, two water courses, and it's bisected by a water course, which actually forms a tributary of Charbot Lake. So the application was circulated to the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority and the Septic Review Authority for technical comments. Um, Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority concluded that all parcels contain enough land area to support development outside of any required regulated uh, setbacks. They also mentioned that since the dug ponds do not appear to be uh, connected to the water course on the surface, uh, their natural heritage setbacks are not applicable. The septic review authority concluded that the proposed severed lot is able to support a new septic system, although some granular fill may be required at the building permit stage. 
No comments were provided from the septic review authority regarding the retained, but given its size, um, it's safe to assume that uh, a septic system can be located somewhere on that lot and a building envelope established. Uh, we did also receive one letter of support from a nearby neighbor. Um, so all this considered, planning staff are recommending the Committee of Adjustments to hear comments from the public and approve the application as submitted if no new issues come up that cannot be resolved today at this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any comments in regard to this application? Okay. Members of the committee, do you have any questions regard to this application of the committee? Is there anybody in the public? Uh, there is not. Okay. Then I will read the motion. This is a, this is a motion moved by Philip Smith, second by Victor Hayes, the consent application B2422 Olden Park Hill for the property located on part lot seven, concession 10, part one, in the geographic township of Olden for a 1.6 hectare or four acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. That the secretary treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act, including providing the notice of decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed. And that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act. Any further discussion members in regard to this application, then I will all in favor of the motion before us this motion is carried any instructions to the applicant. Well, I think he knows he just did one not long ago but all of a sudden I'm in favor. Of so now it's David and Cheryl Rowe. Now, if I may, I think we will handle uh, C and D on the like uh, B2522 Olden and B2622 Olden, both law. We might as well handle those together. Or they should be Hinchinbrook. It, it says Olden in front of me. Am I wrong? It's, it's, wrong. it's Hinchinbrook? Okay. <laughs> Uh, the next one you're going to be wrong on. Too. Right. Okay. It's down underneath. It's correct. Please don't hold that against me. It's election year. <laughs> okay. Is uh, who's speaking? This Sonia. Oh, Jenny? thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Um, as noted, we will be addressing these two applications concurrently, as Jenny, they are from the same subject property, and it makes most sense that way. These applications are for the creation of two new lots. They'll be approximately the same lot area and frontage, 76 meters of frontage or around 250 feet of frontage on Wagerville Road, and just over two hectares or just over five acres in area, each or both of the severed parcels. The subject properties uh, designated rural and zoned rural. Um, the retained parcel is also subject to an organic soils overlay and has an area that is zoned environmental protection exception zone one or EP1. And the EP1 denotes areas of organic soils, which is concurrent or matches, I guess is the better word, the OP designation of the organic soils. Um, as noted, there are areas of wetlands and water bodies as well as water courses throughout the subject property. On the next slide, you can see here, the proposed lots are shown here in yellow and purple um, with a wetland area just outside of them. Um, so as noted, there's no areas of wetlands or other things within the boundaries of the proposed lots, though they are vacant and mostly naturally vegetated. These applications were circulated to both Conservation Authority and Septic Approval for review. The uh, septic review comments dated September 12th indicated no objections to either of the proposed lots and noted that both lots are capable of providing flexibility with regards to siting the sewage systems. The conservation authority comments came in October 3rd and indicated no objection to either proposed lots as well. They did note it there was multiple unevaluated wetlands um, on the property as well as a water course that runs through and connects the two large wetland areas. Um, and the organic soils they noted associated with those two large wetland features. However, as I stated before, and they confirmed these identified natural features are all located on the retained parcel only, and there's no impact to either severed lot. There were no public comments received with regards to either one of these applications. 
planning staff for recommending that the committee hear any comments from the public today and subject to anything raised at this meeting, the count that uh, committee approves both new lots with the conditions recommended in the planning report, um, such as the following, which are met within two years, acceptable reference plan. Um, one additional consideration that is to be noted is that the lot created through B26 must be completed and registered with the land registry office prior to the creation of B25. As you can see on here, that is because you can't have a lot created that has the effect of creating two parcels. So B26 has to be finalized before you can move on to B25. Um, also recommended any outstanding taxes, parkland fee, abandoned wells, standard conditions um, subject to approval. Thank you, Jenny. Um, are there any comments from the applicant or there, uh, you, you don't have an agent on TV or anything, right? So, okay. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions of the applicant regard to this application? Okay. Anybody in the public, Cindy? There is not. Okay. And I will move, move forward with them. I have a motion moved by Victor Hayes, second by Philip Smith, the consent application B2522 Hinch and Brick Bowles Law for the property located on Park Lot 22, 23, and 24, concession six in the geographic township of Hinch and Brick for a 2.15 hectare, 5.3 acre parcel as new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. And that the Secretary Treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act, including the providing a notice of decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified, and any other person or public body prescribed, and that all conditions outlined in notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the Planning Act. Any further discussion on this application before us or motion before us? All in favor of the motion, motion's carried. And that's the next I have before us a motion moved by Philip Smith and by Victor Hayes, a consent application B2622, Hinch and Brook Boslaw for the property located in part lot 22, 23, and 24, concession six in the geographic township of Hinch and Brook for a 2.15 hectare or 5.3 acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. That the Secretary Treasurer issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act, including the providing the notice of decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified, and any other person or public body prescribed. And that, <clears throat> that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issued within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the Planning Act. Any further discussion, panel? All in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Okay, the next item on tonight's agenda is B2722 also and B2822 also creation new lots. Um, who's doing it? Dimitri? Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'm similar to Jenny. I'm going to package two applications and one presentation just because they're on the same lot. Um, so consent application B2722 and B2822 proposed to uh, sever two new rural properties from an existing 51.9 hectare or 128.3 acre lot located at 13856 Road 38 and legally described as part lot 9 and 10, concession 1 and part lot 10 or part lot 11, concession 2 in the geographic township of Oso. Now, I do want to mention that my report mentions that the property is located in the geographic township of Olden. That is incorrect. It is the geographic township of Oso. Um, the application B2722 proposes a lot that is 1.8 hectares or 4.5 acres in area with approximately 82 meters or 267 feet of frontage along Road 38. Uh, 
Uh, there's no development proposed for the slot at this time, but residential is anticipated. Application B2822 proposes a lot that will be 14.8 hectares in area or 36.5 acres with approximately 218 meters or 716 feet of frontage on Wagner Road. Following the severances, the retained parcel will be approximately 35 hectares or 87 acres in area with about 1.2 kilometers of frontage along Road 38. The retained parcel will contain all of the existing development, which includes a dwelling and an attached garage. Uh, lot one, uh, the smaller of the two lots um, and the retained lot are designated as rural uh, by the official plan, while the frontage of lot two uh, is designated is also designated rural, but it's also subject to the mineral aggregate resource sand and gravel constraint overlay. Uh, all the subject lots uh, are zoned rural. The subject property, the entire property, is mostly naturally vegetated and contains a number of large wetlands and watercourses. The application was circulated to the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority uh, and the Septic Review Authority for technical comments and consideration. Uh, MVCA staff noted the presence of large wetlands on a lot two and the retained lot. Uh, initially, they were opposed to the location of the northern lot line on uh, application B2822, that's the larger lot, uh, because it would fragment uh, the ownership of an existing large, large wetland, uh, which goes against the wetland conservation policies of both the Conservation Authority as well as the township. Following these comments, the applicant agreed to revise the parcel fabric to make sure no wet, wetlands were being fragmented. Um, ultimately, the MVCA was satisfied with the revised uh, site plan, which is being considered at today's meeting. So the site plan that you see in front of you is the site plan that the committee is asking uh, to uh, vote on today. Uh, the septic review authority concluded that the um, new lots are able to support a septic system subject to the importation of granular fill at the building permit stage or at the septic permit stage. As of today, we have not received any comments from the public regarding the application. There is one uh, non-standard condition. Well, I guess it is a standard condition, but it's an additional condition added to uh, application B2822, and that's regarding the widening of Wagner Road. Currently, the PIN or the property identification number that describes uh, Wagner Road is about 12 meters of surveyed width, whereas the official plan requires all township roads to be 20 meters wide. As such, planning staff are recommending a road widening to be taken from the frontage of the severed lot. Um, so this will ensure that the Wagner Road uh, frontage on the uh, proposed lot will meet township standards, and it will also uh, correct a slight encroachment on the town uh, onto the applicant's property by the township road. So currently, the township road touch, uh, goes into the corner of the applicant's property. The um, road widening will, in theory, correct that uh, issue. Um, all of this considered, planning staff recommend the committee of adjustments, hear comments from the public, and approve the application as submitted subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, do you have any comments in regard to the applicant? Okay. Did you understand the road widening thing? Okay. Good enough then. Committee members, do you have any? Uh, yeah, I'll get to the public in a second. Yeah. Get to the public. Committee members, do you have any questions of the applicant on this one? Is there anybody in the public that wish to comment? Go ahead, announce, your, tell us your name. And would you come up to the? Uh, hit the red button there, or the button uh, to the far right. Yeah, okay. and speak into the microphone. Yes, uh, I live on Wagner Road and. The, this proposition here of uh, severance, uh, I'm quite concerned about it because it uh, borders my property. And um, my question is, uh, what impact is that going to have on me? I'm not sure if I could anticipate any impact, but uh, if development takes place in accordance with the rules of the zoning bylaw, so if the uh, future landowners um, develop the lot uh, in accordance with the required separation distances from your property, then in theory, there should be no impact because they are required to follow all the zoning rules. Right. Well, I bought that property and, uh, you know, for one good reason was because of the private and it was all, you know, uh, natural. And uh, I like the wildlife. I enjoy that. I just don't want something, you know, permanent. 
within eyesight of, uh, yeah. of uh, Cindy, could you put the map back up on the screen and perhaps I, I, I can get could you show us where where your property is on the map? Oh, uh, with this my map or yeah, no? Yeah. Oh, sorry. so I have them. I have the map up here. Would you be able to point out where your property is located? Um, Austin is here somewhere yeah are you on road 38 or are no, you on like the right in this right there road is down right so i i have uh just after the curve here in the road and then my car goes straight back and then uh you know uh, uh, is the green yeah. green yeah. is what the the, the the green the so just to be clear the green law is the law that's being proposed and that is owned by Mr. Adur. Well, uh, so uh, correct. What's the what's the address? Uh, Eleven twenty three. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell. Mm -hmm. So I um I'm going to use my mouse cursor there uh, on the screen to point at something. So um as far as impact, I don't anticipate any negative impact regarding any sight lines from your property or what you will be able to see. The reason for that is because the de anticipated development envelope or where development is going to take place will be right where I'm pointing to, right in this area, because this is the dry spot on the lot. So this is every the area between where the development is would be anticipated and where your property is, is a wetland and development in that wetland is prohibited by law. And that's right. And not only that, but the applicant, any future person that develops this lot has to maintain at least 100 feet or 30 meters of separation between the edge of the wetland and the development envelope. So that's gonna be well away from uh, your lot. and. I, in my opinion, um, I don't anticipate any land use conflicts as a result of that. Um, if there was going to be a, uh, something proposed, it wouldn't be gigantic, would it? It would just be like residential. I, it's 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 hard to anticipate what the development would be until uh, there is. A building permit that's uh, submitted, a building permit application that's submitted. Okay. What the um, committee is considering today is the creation of that lot. So they're not considering uh, what this property will be developed with because that is unknown at this time. Right. The only thing that's being considered is whether or not the creation of this lot meets the creation policies and the rules associated with lot creation that's set out by the township uh, policy framework. Okay, so uh when does this all happen like uh finalize so it if if the application is approved today there is a 20-day appeal period and then following that once the surveys are completed um it could take up to two years so they have two years to complete everything for the lot to be created oh okay. uh, but um the lot can be created anytime between um today's decision and uh two years from now so when it's when it's severed there will be markers and posts or whatever de dictating where it is right that's right so when a, a new lot is created a surveyor will go out there measure out delineate where that new lot lines uh, where the new lineup line is going to be mm -hmm. and they will put in a, um, a an iron bar into the ground to, to denote every um corner of the property so because there's lots of corners on this one though there'll, there'll be lots of iron bars right. to denote the limit of that property um but for they won't be denoting the wetland but the wetland feature is there so the wetland itself is uh, government owned is is that how it works i don't know it's not owned by the government it is um regulated so what that means is any development is prohibited without um well any development is prohibited inside of a wetland right. and if you do um alter say the shoreline of the wetland all that will go through the mississippi valley conservation authority they're the approval authority for um anything that happens to do 
happens with wetlands, but the zoning bylaw, the way it's worded now, prohibits any type of development within the wetland itself or within 30 meters of the wetland. And that's from the municipal side, just from the town, uh, the township side. Okay. I think that covers it all for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, is there anybody else from the public, uh, Cindy, online? There is not. Okay. In that case, uh, I will read the motion. Well, I should have asked if there was any further question by the committee members. No? Okay. And I have a motion moved by Victor Hayes, second by Philip Smith, the consent application B2722 Oslo Bador for the property located in part lot nine and 10 concession one, part lot 11 and concession two in the geographic township of Oslo for a 1.8 hectare, 4.5 acre parcel as a new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. That the Secretary Treasurer shall issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act, including providing the notice of decision to the applicant any person or public body that made a written request to be notified and any other person or public body prescribed and that all conditions outlined in the notice of decision shall be completed and the certificate of official issue within a period of two years after the notice of decision was issued as required by the planning act. Any further discussion members? All in favor of the motion before us? Motion's carried. And I have a motion moved by Hayes, second by Smith, that consent application B2822 Oso Bador for the property located on part lot nine and 10 at concession one and part lot 11, concession two in the geographic township of Oso for a 14.8 hectare, 36.5 acre parcel as new lot be approved subject to the conditions noted in the planning report. That the secretary treasurer issue the notice of decision in accordance with the requirements of the planning act including the providing a notice of a decision to the applicant, any person or public body that made a written request to be notified, and any other person or public body prescribed, and that all conditions outlined in the notice decision shall be completed, and the certificate of official issued within a period two years after the notice decision was issued as required by Planning Act. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion before us. This motion is carried. Instructions to... Can you hear me? Here. I will mail the paperwork out, or you can pop in and grab whatever. Perfect. So really, I took it wait twenty days. Yeah. Before you, so everything is yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else to come before the committee tonight? No. Okay. And I have a motion moved by Hayes, second by Smith, that the meeting be adjourned until 4 p.m. November 10th, 2022, virtually in person at Oso Hall, 1107 Garrett Street, Charbot Lake. Anybody voting against that? All in favor? Sure. Motion's carried. Dimitri? <laughs> Wouldn't this guy have bars along his 